What makes up a serverless technology and why is it important? Uh, so serverless tech enables developers by allowing them to build and ship applications faster because like the name implies, you're not worried about managing and deploying servers. Uh, you just build and deploy your application code and logic and all of the infrastructure scaling, uh, everything else is taken care of for you. So you can focus just on what you need to focus on to build your application. So this gives you reduced DevOps. You can ship solutions much faster because you really are just worried about the core logic of your application and you get per action billing. So you're only ever charged for the number of events or messages or workflows that you actually execute so that if nothing is ever running, you're not paying anything. Uh, so this is why a lot of people get very excited about serverless. I would say it's one of those pieces of technology that the best thing for you to do if you haven't done it already is try to build an application and see for yourself where these benefits could come in for you. Uh, and so to help you do this, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, I am going to build out a scenario end to end and show you how the components fit together and how it enabled me to solve this problem very quickly. So. The serverless components in Microsoft Azure are threefold. Uh, you have Azure Functions, which is your serverless compute. You can think of this as you give it your little bit of C Sharp or PowerShell, JavaScript, whatever code, uh, and it's listening to some event, either you know something gets uploaded into storage or you get an HTTP request, and that little bit of code will execute. Uh, on demand, you, know, you have millions of IoT events, you'll get millions of function executions. If you only get one, you only have to execute one time. Uh, Azure Logic Apps is serverless workflows. So this enables you to chain different functions together. You'll see this with our employee onboarding process where you might need to create the user in Azure Active Directory. You might need to create a mailbox for them, maybe send them an email. Uh, all of those types of workflow, do this, then that capabilities uh, is what Logic Apps provides. And finally, we have the newest member of the serverless family, which is Azure Event Grid. And this is serverless event routing. Uh, you can think of this in terms of all of these different systems may have events that you care about. And when I say systems, I mean everything from your Azure subscription to your storage account to uh, you have an application that has an event of a new employee just got hired. Uh, that's an event. And when that event happens, you need it to route that event to all the pieces that need to execute. Uh, so Event Grid is serverless and optimized exactly uh, for use in these types of serverless applications. So we will go through where that fits in in this process um, as we build this out. So before I show you any code, uh, I, this slide didn't build out perfect. You see I have a straggling arrow right there, but that's fine. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're going to automate employee onboarding. Uh, so if you think about onboarding to any company, it can be a fairly manual process today, and it's one that serverless makes super easy to automate. Uh, so the steps of, of employee onboarding is fairly simple, right? You have a new employee who's joining your company. Uh, you need to make sure that they have a login so that when they come to work, they can log in and access corporate resources. You need to make sure that they're a member of your Office 365 subscription, your Microsoft Teams. You need to make sure that they're assigned to their manager, that they know who their manager is, that the manager knows that they're coming. Uh, all of these are, are different pieces that need to happen. And we're going to build a serverless app that does all of that automatically for us. So whenever an employee gets an offer accepted, you know they're gonna start. It fires off an event, which will start off this process and do all of this for us automatically. And it's just a few steps and a few lines of code so the first thing that will happen is an employee is going to submit this request to join. It's going to have the information on their uh, employee status. Uh, you're going to have some legal documents like maybe a driver's license or social security card. So the Azure function is going to spin up, process that information, and then it's going to fire off an event to Azure Event Grid. So I'm going to have a custom event topic. So this is my own custom events that I'm going to send, not one that's being automatically generated from another service. These are events I'm pushing myself saying, hey, I have an employee hired event. So I'm gonna fire off an event saying, hey, this employee's been hired, they need to have all the information, here's the event and here's some information about how who the employee is or where you can get more information on them. So once that event has been sent to EventGrid, this is where I can have different serverless components responding and reacting 
instantly when that event gets published. So what we're going to have listening is an Azure Logic app. And that Azure Logic app will be listening for any event on employees. And it's going to say, hey, there's an employed hired event. So now it executes this workflow to create the user in Azure Active Directory, uh, send the email uh, to the employee's current email address that says, you know, hey, welcome to the company. Uh, you know, here's your username and password for your email address. Here's everything you need to get started. It's also going to send a calendar invite, a calendar invite to the manager and the employee, so that they have a one-on-one -on -one scheduled uh, for the first day when they're reported to come to office. Uh, so this is what we're going to build, uh, and I'm going to walk you through this application and some of the tools that I use to build it, so that you can understand how these components fit together. Obviously, this is employee onboarding, but the same principles could be followed whether you're doing, you know, a customer has just signed up and they want to join the service uh, or any number of other events that, that might be happening within your business. Uh, these same tools can be leveraged um, to help optimize and make this really quick for you. Uh, so for the next five or 10 minutes, let's walk through the solution now. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you is Azure Functions. Uh, you can imagine, as I mentioned, this process is starting off with a form that's being submitted. I even have an example HTML page. It's really simple uh, where maybe I'm, I'm filling in a form, I'm providing information on the employee that I need to onboard, maybe providing things like a, a picture of their driver's license and so on. And when I click Submit here, I need this to be processed. In order to do that on-demand processing, uh, I'm actually going to be using Azure Functions. So let me show you how easy it is to get started with an Azure function. So I'm in Visual Studio 2017. I'm just going to come in here and say File, New Project. And in Visual Studio 2017, I have this Azure Functions project. Uh, so I'm just going to leave this default name there. Uh, I go ahead and click uh, Go, and, and I'm ready to go. So now I have a function app. I can start adding uh, functions inside of it. So I could say, hey, I want a new function and call this hello world. And I can choose what's the event it's listening for, uh, like an HTTP trigger in this case from that web form. Click OK, and I'm up and running. So that's it. That's as fast and as easy as it is to get started. You'll notice here I barely have to have any code. Uh, it will be published to the cloud and run on demand for me and run this code. So let me show you what the code looks like that does our employee onboarding uh, application for us. So I've switched here over to this uh, employee request function app project, and I have a single function in it called receive a request. And this is what's listening to that web form that I showed you earlier. And again, I'll just call out how few lines of code I had to write to process this data. I don't have to have any boilerplate code or framework code. I just write the function. This little bit of logic is how I process employees. I'm going to grab the social security card and the driver's license and write it to an Azure storage account. Uh, I'm going to generate a temporary password. And then I'm going to fire off an event, that event saying we have a new employee. And I'm going to send the data uh, of my employee along with it. So. I don't have to write very much code at all, and I've got just the logic I need. I can publish this now to the cloud, and it will start listening for those events and running on demand uh, as many events as I need processed for it. Something else I'll call out quickly here is that because I'm writing this in Visual Studio, I do have great tools, like I can set a breakpoint right here, and I even click this Run button. And what's happening is that the Azure Functions core tools are actually running on my machine. So the exact same environment, the exact same runtime that will process and run my function in Azure is now running on my machine. It's exposed this localhost endpoint uh, so that I can test this out, debug it, simulate, uh, run unit tests, whatever I want against my functions uh, and have confidence in knowing that if it works on my machine, if it works in my environment, that's how it will work in the cloud with the benefit now that the cloud can scale out uh, and scale infinitely uh, and only charge me for what I need to execute. So I've got this running now. Let me go ahead and simulate uh, a form being sent to this function. You'll see I have an employee here uh, that I want to onboard. And it hits the breakpoint. And just like uh, any other great debugger, uh, I can come in here. I can you know step through and look at the different values as I'm debugging it just like I would debug any other application. 
uh, that's what I'm able to do just right here within Visual Studio. Uh, so that's just a quick example of some of the tools that I have at my disposal for Azure Functions. And as you notice, the last thing I'm actually doing here is I'm sending an event to Azure Event Grid. So I have an event grid uh, called Employees in my Azure subscription. And in this case, I'm actually sending off a request to add a new event. You'll notice I'm, I'm doing things like setting the time. I'm saying the event type is that an employee was hired. Uh, I can set a subject if I want to, you know, distinguish into a little bit more detail on the employee was hired, you know, with which subject under what resource or what type. And then I'm passing in all of my employee details so that I can process that employee on other systems that I need. So what Event Grid is doing for me here is now I can go set up different listeners to Azure Event Grid to fire off an event of a new employee being hired. So let's go ahead and switch now and do exactly that. So I'm going to switch over here to uh, Microsoft Azure. And let's go ahead and show how you can create an Azure Logic app to do processing on top of Event Grid as well and start off a serverless workflow. So in this case, I'm here in the Microsoft Azure portal. I'm just going to go ahead and click New here. And under Web and Mobile, you'll see I have a Logic app. So let's go ahead and create one of these. I'll call this, you know, My Event Listener. And I'll stick it in my Azure subscription. And now what this has created for me is that serverless workflow. So this is where I can start to chain and listen to events, either from Azure Functions or from any of these other over 175 services that we have connectors for. And I can listen to events from any of these uh, and now start a serverless workflow to process that. Um, so you'll see here there's everything from on-premises SAP to cognitive services like text analytics, face recognition, uh, language detection, GitHub, Dynamics, Salesforce, you name it. But what I'm actually going to use here is the Azure Event Grid uh, connector. And this lets me listen to events that are coming from Azure Event Grid. So I can go ahead and select that and say, hey, I want to trigger this serverless workflow whenever an event occurs. Uh, so let me choose the subscription that has my Event Grid uh, topic. It's actually in this subscription. And you'll notice here that it has seen that I have this topic called Employee. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and listen on. Uh, so just that easily now, I'm able to register something and start to act on something like when a resource event occurs. And now I can start to take actions, right? Uh, so I could go ahead and start adding actions here and, and calling things like Azure Functions. Maybe I want to send an email right away uh, or just make an HTTP request. So the last thing I'm just going to switch over quickly now and show you what does this Logic App look like in the end uh, that onboards this employee. So let's go ahead here and I'll go ahead and discard those changes because I have this employee onboarding workflow that we've already built. So there's a few things here that I'm doing and I'll walk through this step by step uh, very quickly. So I'm getting this event and if you remember from my function code, I'll actually show you, uh, I'm sending in this data object which is going to be my employee. So I'll show you what an employee looks like. This is what an employee is. It has a first name, a last name, an email address, start date, all of these different things that I'm looking for with an employee. I'm going to be sending that in my event. So in order to parse out those values, I'm going to use this. Uh, let's see if I can get rid of this little pop up. I'm going to use this parse uh, JSON object and I'm going to say, hey, parse out the data and grab all these properties. Uh, I could even just provide a sample of the event and it would have generated all of this for me even. So now I have, you know, the employee who's who's being hired. Uh, I have, you know, their name, their manager, when they should start. And now I just need to create that process. So what I'm doing here is I'm calling the Microsoft Graph. Uh, so you can go to graph.microsoft.com. I actually have it open right here. This enables you to do a ton of different operations, whether it's on users, whether it's on mailboxes, uh, OneDrive, Excel, OneNote, whatever you want. Uh, you can call the Microsoft Graph API directly. That's exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm calling the Microsoft Graph API and I'm saying, hey, go ahead and create an employee and create them with all of this information. You know, their display name should be their first name and their last name with a space in the middle. Uh, here's what their alias is. Here's what their temporary password should be. This is their last name. This is what their uh, UPN should be in their email address. 
Uh, so you'll see I'm, I'm able to just come in here and, and even if I want to make more changes, uh, I can just kind of add content. I could drop in different properties uh, from different steps uh, or even, you know, if I want to generate a random GUID, I could do that with here in, in my Logic app. So that just gives you a feel of, of the tools that you have to uh, write these applications. And after I create the user, the graph is going to come back to me with the user ID. I need to assign their manager. Uh, and then I need to assign them an Office 365 license. So you notice none of these steps are overly complex. But what Logic Apps is providing me here is that it will chain these uh, workflow steps together. And what's better is that if there's something that goes wrong, I could do things like add exception handling. I could specify which actions to run on failure. I could do conditions. So I have this really rich control flow and resiliency across my workflow uh, so that I can just chain these applications and steps together. And finally, after I've given them a mailbox, I've given them a manager, I've given them a login, I'm going to do two steps in parallel. I'm going to go ahead and send them an email, and I'm using our Office 365 connector to do that. So I say, you know, hey, we're excited you've joined. Here's your temporary password and your email address. Here's where you can go to log in. And then I'm actually going to create a calendar invite for them uh, based on their start date. And I'm going to go ahead and, and have a calendar appointment on them and their manager's calendar so that they know when they can get started. Uh, so this is great, and it's going to fire the second an event happens from Azure Event Grid. So to prove this happens and how quickly it happens, you'll notice here uh, my last run was on 8.16. So I'm going to come over here to my Azure function. Let's actually run this again. Let me make sure I don't have my breakpoint sitting there. And we're going to run this request. We're going to onboard an employee, watch this whole process happen, and then I should get an email as a result of this too uh, since my email address is one of those. So let's go ahead here and submit this request. So it sent off the request and it gave me back a 202 response, which has now gone and fired an event to Event Grid. So if we come back over here and if I click refresh, you'll notice we already had this thing fire and run because Event Grid fired off the instant the event happened, which notified my Logic App the instant something happened. I can even come in here and see everything that happened. Here's the event that I created. You see here were all my employee details that got sent along with the event. I even got sent links to where the driver's license and the social security cards are. Uh, I went ahead and created a user inside of the Microsoft Graph. I assigned their manager. I gave them a license, and I sent them a welcome email. In fact, I can hear it. You, you probably can't, but I can hear I'm getting uh, some notifications here, and that's because I just got this email uh, so you can see i got the email it's saying thanks so much for joining here's your email address and password i could kind of even hear uh, and follow the link and uh, log in if i wanted to that's just a quick walk through of the different tools at your disposal uh, i could obviously continue to add on to this to add azure functions or, or different connectors as i need um, but that's kind of how logic apps, uh, event grid, and functions can play together to build the serverless app. So now in 60 lines of code and in an eight-step logic app, I have automated my employee onboarding process. Uh, I've published it to the cloud. And what's great is I don't pay a single thing until this thing runs. And even then when it runs, it's micro sense. Like unless I'm hiring a million employees a month, I probably will not even notice this workflow in my Azure subscription. Uh, so I'd encourage you all to check out Azure serverless offerings. Give this a shot. We have documentation and quick starts across functions, logic apps, and event grid. You can follow the exact same patterns that I've done here. Uh, and reach out to us if you have any questions as well. You can find us on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter uh, is at Jeff Holland, or you can reach out to the logic apps, functions, or event grid teams as well. So thanks so much for watching, and good luck and have fun building serverless apps.